this underlying background energy that exists everywhere in space is described in physics as the vacuum. What if there was a way to connect to this vacuum energy rather than depleting our natural resources? Humanity is on a course that's unsustainable. For millions of years, magnetic fields have been around us without us knowing about them until Faraday figured out that by moving a little magnet across a set of wires, we could get an electric power source that could power all of the devices we use today in our society. Now we are discovering there is another invisible field at the source of the material world that is all around us and in large quantities. And by learning how to tap into its structure, we could power our world for generations to come. Scientists from around the world are looking for a solution to tap the vacuum energy that is all around us. And it is important that they succeed. Current wars and potential conflicts of the future will be fought over resources like oil and water. Abundant energy will help create stability in the world and reduce the threats of the perceived energy supply disruptions that cause countries to go to war. War has been a big part of humanity's past. But does it need to be a big part of humanity's future? War has brought untold sorrow and suffering to mankind. And it is perhaps the strongest example of what can happen when we become so disconnected. Gandhi said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. With our modern capacity to wage war, there can be no victors. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, once said, the strength of a civilization is not measured by its ability to fight wars, but rather by its ability to prevent them. Learning how to harness this vacuum energy all around us could have profound implications, but it will require a paradigm shift. Some of the greatest advances in science have come from people with the courage to pursue ideas that challenge the accepted wisdom of the time. It was common for these new ideas to meet with rejection at first. Galileo was in prison. People resisted Faraday because he had limited formal education. And do you know what happened when Einstein published his great works in 1905? Nothing happened. People didn't connect to his ideas. The only person who really saw what Einstein had done was Max Planck, who would become the father of quantum theory. Pursuing an independent path outside the academic world has been extremely difficult. It has been painful in many circumstances. The feeling of continuously being rejected, of not being understood, the constant interaction of fighting preconceived ideas has been a long road. However, it has forced me to be more accurate, to continue digging deeper, and to be extremely careful about my calculations and how I bring them into the world. So it has served a certain purpose. Our material world is not a solid, 
as it appears at the quantum level. As Tesla put forth nearly a century ago, we need to think of the universe as energy, frequency, and vibration, not as solid physical forms. We're not dealing with little billiard balls. We're dealing with waveforms, oscillations in the vacuum. Just like when we throw rocks into a pond and the rings come out, the rings can intersect and it doesn't destroy the waveform of one of the rings or the other. The two just intersect. And so that the spheres, the little vibrations of the vacuum are intersecting and it is the holographic structure of space-time itself. It is the interference pattern that encodes the information of the whole universe in every point. The idea of a holographic universe was first put forward by physicist David Bohm, advanced by Gerard de Hooft, then later expanded by Leonard Susskind. It was inspired by new understandings of black hole thermodynamics, that the information of the black hole is present on the 2D surface of the black hole, known as its event horizon. A simple example is that if you throw a wallet into a black hole, as the wallet is being consumed by the black hole, all the information contained in the wallet would become present on the surface of the black hole because it is a rule of the universe that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Holograms are created using lasers to capture and encode the information of an object in the form of an interference pattern. The light reflected from the object is combined with that of a reference beam to create an interference pattern which can be retained on a photosensitive surface, creating a complete image that can be viewed in its entirety from all angles. The information of the whole is present at every point. When the hologram is cut in half, the complete image is present on both pieces. When it is cut again and again, every piece still contains the representation of the whole image. It is not the actual object, but a representation of the actual object in every piece. Nassim Haramein believes that the representation of the universe is encoded by the interference pattern of the fluctuation of space-time on the surface of every proton. The difference from the static hologram example is that the holographic information encoding is dynamically happening at every microsecond at every moment, and it is constantly flowing throughout the universe. We often hear the sentence or the concept, everything is connected, it's all one. We hear that from even masters in ancient civilization or modern thinkers, philosophers, spiritual people. And it's a great concept. For many people, it resonates as something true. But how is that true? Some of the work I've been doing starts to open the door to understanding the dynamics and the mechanics on how everything is connected so that it's no longer just a dogma or an idea, but it's actually based on the physics of reality. <laughs> 